Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we take you through everything to do with your outdoor matting and getting set up to make sure your next trip away is as smooth as possible. We show you the variety of ground mats, step covers, other mats, ground cover ideas, and even tools to make your trip a lot easier. Come along as we show you how. So this will be a quick little video where I run through a whole range of different products you can get and we'll start at the beginning when you're first setting up your camper trailer or caravan. One thing I've been using for ages, which I got from Adam over at Caravan Mods, is this jockey wheel dock. What this does is it secures the jockey wheel so it doesn't roll around and most importantly what it does is it increases the surface area that your jockey wheel places on the ground. So if you're setting up somewhere where it's a little bit soft, this will save your jockey wheel sinking down into the ground and what happens sometimes is when you go to wind it up, if you're right at the limit of that jockey wheel, you won't be able to quite get it onto your ball hitch. So these are fantastic. And if it does actually sink down, you've got this handy little pull rope where you can pull it out of the ground, wash it off and pack it away. Now Adam actually offers this in a combo deal, which is called the Get Level Pack. It includes this and four pads you put under your stabilizers. And now when I come to think of it, I probably should have got that pack so I had the stabilizer pads, which I don't currently have, because that retails for only $60. I'll put a link of all these products in the description so you can go and get them if you're interested in adding them to your particular kit. So now let's move on to preparing the ground before you put your ground mat down. Now I think most of us probably carry a portable shovel around. Just a little compact shovel like this is fantastic for scooping out rocks and bits and pieces out of the ground before you go and put a ground mat down. But there's a few other things you can also carry along which become really handy and also have a dual purpose. And that's one thing I always like to have is something with a dual purpose. You can dig holes, get yourself out of bogs, remove rocks and everything with one of these shovels. So they're extremely handy and should go in your kit. Another thing I highly recommend is one of these portable camping rakes. And the same thing as a shovel, that allows you to prepare the area, particularly if there's a lot of sticks and debris around, so you can quickly clean up where you're preparing to camp. These are particularly handy if you're doing a lot of off-grid camping, where you come up to a site and someone's left a mess, or there's a bit of junk that you just need to clean up before you set up. And what's more, this handy rake actually compacts down, so you can pack it away in your boot or somewhere like that. We also carry around a number of these foam interlocking squares, which are really handy to either put down in front of your ground matting, particularly if you're camping in a muddy area, so your kids and all your guests and everyone can sort of wipe their shoes before they go on, just to try to control the mess a little bit. They're also extremely handy in sand. We also use a few of these under our tent shower so that you can stand on it and keep sort of dry when you're getting changed. And when you're continually watering that area, having showers, it provides a little bit of support and in areas where there is a little bit of mud and the showers making it a little bit worse, these keep things a little bit tidier. Now another good use for these, if you've got a low spot before you put your ground mat down, you can put a few of these down, run the ground mat over and that helps level things out a little bit. So these are extremely handy, they take up a little bit of space but they're obviously light as. So chuck a few under your bed, in the back of the ute or something like that because they're extremely handy and you can use them everywhere. And I'd also recommend you get one of these compact leaf blowers. They're extremely handy, quite compact to pack away in the back of your caravan or camper trailer. And most importantly, they do a variety of things. You can get the campfire going, you can dry off your awning if it's wet and you're trying to pack up. You can blow things out, including the caravan or camper trailer. They're a great bit of gear. I've got two of these and probably should have three to be honest. This one from home I pack when we go away and I've got one in the work van as well. They're pretty cool. And then before we get onto the ground mats themselves, I thought I'd quickly touch on different mats that you can use to stop a lot of that dirt and grime getting inside your caravan or camper trailer. We obviously use a large mutt mat, which has been fantastic. Particularly if you're in sandy grounds, it collects all the sand and you can easily get it all back out just by giving it a bit of a shake. So this has been really, really good and a bit of a game changer really, because up until we got this muck mat, 
we're using those interlocking foam squares, which work okay, but this is heaps better. You can also get a lot of that grass off before you start going up the stairs and go inside the van itself. And while I always try to tell our boys to take their shoes off, they invariably will end up running out with no shoes on and still bringing the grass back inside. So it's just managing that from a matting point of view. Going on from the bottom muck mat, we've actually got a caravan step cover, which we got again from Adam over at Caravan Mods. This is a fantastic product that simply clips over the top of your steps. You leave it on even when you're traveling. I probably would take it off if I was going down some really muddy, dirty roads, because it will get covered in dirt and mud, obviously, even though it's folded up inside the van. But this has been on for over 12 months now. We've never taken it off. This van is actually left outside and it's lasted incredibly well. That provides a slip resistance to the step, as well as another threshold for getting some of that dirt off before you walk it up inside the van. Now to show you how easy these are to put on, let's run over to the Swan because I've got a set of covers I've been meaning to put on that for quite some time. I've actually been waiting to do this video. So now we've got everything out, I'll show you how easy it is to put them on. So if we run over to our trusty Jayco Swan over here, we've got a two-step arrangement. So Adam sells these in a single or twin pack, depending on what step arrangement you have. So in our case with the Swan, we've got the two-step pack, which has the upper step and the narrower piece for the lower step. And then they're fixed by a number of springs into eyelets on the rear. So these springs simply come out and clip back into the eyelets when you secure them around the step themselves. It really is that easy. And as I said, with our journey, we've been running the step cover on for over 12 months. It's been stored outside in all the weather and it hasn't deteriorated at all. However, if I was camping or traveling in some real muddy areas where these are gonna get covered in dirt while you're in transit, I would pull them off. And it's just a simple case of releasing these springs, pulling the covers off and storing them away and then popping them back on when you get to site. So let's pop these on and see how good they look. So I've got the springs removed. You simply slide the cover on wrap it around and then secure the springs back in from underneath. And it'll be easy to show with the lower cover because we can slide it on, flick the step up and pop the springs in. And just like that, the springs are in place and this step cover isn't going anywhere. And again, I'll put a link down in the description for these step covers because I reckon they're a pretty handy bit of gear that most importantly stop you slipping off these steps when you get out in the middle of the night and you're going off to the loo. Now, even though in our journey here, we've actually got a marine carpet step, I've actually gone out and bought a muck mat step because I find they're so easy to clean out. I can just simply place this in here. That's another little point of defense. And then we can shake it out while we're camping and doing our normal things and not having to worry about sweeping this step off and keeping it all nice and tidy. You can just pull this out, shake it out, put it back into place and off you go. And our last point of defense is I've actually got from Bunnings just a simple carpet mat. Now this is a brown mat which matches the interior of our Jayco journey here and most importantly it doesn't have a rubber backing on it. Try to avoid getting mats if you're putting them on the floor inside your caravan or camper trailer that have a rubber matting because they'll quite often leave marks on the floor, particularly if you're using them in wet weather or in hot conditions where the rubberized backing can actually deteriorate and get stuck to your floor. It makes it extremely hard to get off and will actually sometimes leave a permanent stain. So for us, this actually works quite well. What some people will also do just to soften up the interior of their caravan or camper trailer is they'll buy runners which you can run down the main area or in front of the kitchen down towards the bunks or the ensuite or however your layout works or some people will even go to the full extent of putting marine carpet all the way through that can be pulled out depending on where you're going and what kind of conditions you're camping in. A lot of people do prefer to put the marine carpet in, particularly in the camper trailers over the winter months, because it makes it a little bit more warm and cozy inside. But for me, that's just another extra step. So, so we generally just use mats, keep everything simple. You can pull them out, vacuum them off, shake them if you need to, put them back in and you're ready to go. So now we get on to ground mats because that's where things get quite interesting. Now there's a few different types around and different brands obviously, such as your Sea Gear mats, your Oztrail and all those open mesh style mats 
which we've got here on our journey. Now I'm pretty sure this one's a Camp Smart that came with the journey when we bought it and it's actually done a half lap of Australia. So this has had a fair workout along with our camping trips that we've done as well and most of them have been in the rain unfortunately at the same time. Now the good thing about these mats is they let a lot of that sand if you're camping in sandy sort of areas fall through into the ground underneath. They also let the grass underneath if you're camping in a grassy area breathe. So these mats are fantastic for keeping everything alive and keeping everything nice, neat and tidy. Now they're extremely easy to clean. Most of the time you just brush them off or give them a bit of a blow, put them on the fence, give them a hose and they're ready to go again. So for most camps, I think these are a really good bit of gear. Get the length that's right for your particular van and there's a number of different colors you can get. In our Swan, we actually use this green Austral set, which is essentially the same as the Camp Smart matting we've got here. It packs up all nice and compact, doesn't take up a lot of room in the front boot of our Swan, and is extremely quick and easy to put down onto the ground. You can obviously peg these into place to keep them all nice and taut when you're setting up. One little trick that I found, and my dad actually gave me some of these years and years and years ago when we were doing tent camping, is you can use um, engine valves. And they've got a nice big large top, which go in through the eyelets of the mesh and keep it all secured down onto the ground. As opposed to pegs, which make it a little bit messy and sort of stretch things out, the round top of the valves actually work incredibly well. They've only got a fairly short stem on them, so they're easy to pull back out. And in most instances, even if you're in real hard, rocky ground, you can give them a good hammer to get them in to secure the matting down onto the ground. But there's obviously different types out there. So we've been running the open mesh for a number of years without any dramas at all. But sometimes if you're in real dusty environments or where there is a lot of sand, you want something a little bit different and that's a little bit more resilient to all the dust pouring out through the open cell nature of these mesh mats. And that's where these recycle mats come into play. Now these are fantastic in climates where you're camping with that real fine dust and you want to keep the area under your awning fairly clean as much as you possibly can. They're extremely easy to clean with these little compact blowers where you can just blow off all the dust and debris. So they do have a part to play. So let's get these both set up and I'll run through the pros and cons of each and why you want to be a little bit cautious with your recycle matting. Even though it comes in a lot of nice designs, it looks all nice and pretty in front of the caravan, but it does have one major drawback, which we'll get onto once we get this into place. So you'll notice they look pretty neat. I do have to say these do look better than the open mesh style mats. They just provide a little bit of pizzazz around your camping setup. But it's not all about that. A few things that I don't like about these particular mats is firstly, they take up a lot of room when you're traveling. So you need to have an area where you can store this away. They're reasonably light, but they're probably a little bit heavier than the equivalent mesh style mat. I mean, even comparing bags, the bag for the mesh ground mat is considerably smaller than the one for the recycled mat. And now the one critical thing against the recycled mats, and this is where you want to be a little bit careful, particularly if you're doing long camps and long stays in one spot for an extended period of time, is that these mats don't breathe all that well. And what they have a tendency to do is to kill any grass that's sitting under them if they're down for a long period of time. They also get a little bit warmer on top if they've got direct sunlight on them, which again, superheats the grass underneath and tends to kill it off. So this is why caravan parks in particular don't really like people using these recycled mats. They're probably fine for a few days. We'll leave this down for a few days while I'm filming a few other episodes. But for the vast majority of places, if you're staying for a week or longer, this will deteriorate the grass or any living thing that's sitting underneath it. Obviously where the pro is for the recycle mats is that they look a lot better. They're a lot nicer to walk on. They're easier to clean when you're actually out on site because you can actually just blow things off the top of them. And more importantly, if you're staying in real fine dusty climates or even where there is a lot of sand, it does stop a lot of that dust and sand coming up from underneath the mat that you get with the open cell mesh mats that a lot of us use. So there are two pros and cons for all these different ground covers that you might use. 
I actually think it's a really good idea to have both because another place where this comes in really handy is if you're on a caravan site that has a concrete slab for example and the slab ends up being on your awning side because of how they're arranged, it's actually nice to put this down over the concrete and it provides quite a nice amenity when you're set up and camping. You put all your furniture on top, which I'm just about to do, and it is actually really quite nice. I do like the feel of them. I just don't like that they're a little bit more bulky, so I won't carry this around all the time, but we will take it on trips where we definitely need a little bit more ground protection and we're not so concerned with killing off the grass underneath. So those are a few things to consider and really covers off the little quick video I've made now, which is everything to do with the ground, steps, covers, stabilizers, things like that to make your life a little bit easier. And hopefully they give you a little bit more direction and reasoning as to why caravan parks in particular don't like these recycled mats and why a fair few people use the open mesh style. But obviously where each of them has their strengths and weaknesses. So anyway, thanks for watching. Put a few comments down below on what you think about the ground mats. And if you actually use pads under your stabilizer legs and all that sort of gear, I'd be very interested to know. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. And as I always say, thanks for watching. Get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.